What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Aviator Chris. In this fourth video in the Home Sim Tour series, we're going to be taking a look at all the miscellaneous switch panels I have and some of the software that ties it all together. Stick around. Alright guys, so just a quick disclaimer. This is not a sponsored video or an ad. I purchased all these items with my own money and these opinions are my own. Alright, starting from left to right, on the left hand side here we have the uh, Desktop Aviator Cessna 172 switch panel, uh, complete with an actual key. Uh, the start switch is not spring-loaded, however, uh, but it does the job just fine. It's got all the other switches that you need to basically complete pretty much any Cessna 172 type flight. Now this panel is not limited to a Cessna 172, obviously. It's just a, a regular switch panel, just looks like a Cessna. You can use either the InSim software or something like SPAD.next. Uh, to map all these switches to uh, what you'd like them to be. All right, so in the center here, we have the Virtual Fly TQ6 Plus throttle quadrant, uh, all metal construction, Hall effect sensors, fantastic unit. Um, no real software needed, just map the axes to what you need. Um, it even has an axis based uh, reverse, so you can bring it down to the detent uh, on idle and then pull it through and uh, engage reverse. I would just like to say their support is fantastic. I had some very weird issue where I had to do the hardware recalibration. Their support walked me through it and I've been up and running ever since with no issues. So up next we have the desktop aviator Cessna 172 flap switch. I use spad.next to map the functions into the sim, but you could also use the in-sim uh, options as well. All the way on the right on the top here we have the Logitech FIPS panels, otherwise known as the flight instrument panel. Uh, I also use spad.next to map the various functions uh, onto those displays. Um, and basically that provides me standby instruments in the sim. All right, so up next we have some legacy GoFlight P8 and T8 switch panels. Those are the push button and uh, toggle switch. The eight is just standard that there's eight switches or buttons on them. Um, I use spad.next exclusively to program those for whatever reason. I don't know if it's just because they're so old, they're well over 10 years now. Um, they don't show up in any in-game control panel for me. So last up we have the FSX Dual and that allows me to use my real world Bose A20 aviation headset and plug that in and then I could use that to talk to various ATC networks like Pilot Edge and Vatsim. And lastly we have the butt kicker. And what that does is that provides tactile feedback um, to your chair. Um, you could feel every ground bump, uh, turbulence, when the flaps, gear retraction, things like that. Uh, it really, believe it or not, I, I was very skeptical at first, but uh, in using it, it really adds a lot of value to the sim. All right, let's jump over and take a look at some of the SPAD.next settings and just a little overview on how that software works. All right, guys, so this is the SPAD.next software. This is by no means an in-depth guide. It's just a quick overview of how I use it and just scratching the surface. Uh, the possibilities are really endless with this software with, with the amount of features and functionality that it can actually bring to the sim. Uh, my biggest favorite feature is probably the aircraft profiles. Once you get everything configured how you want it and save it, you could assign the aircraft you want to that profile. And as soon as you load the particular sim and that particular aircraft, that profile will be active and all your settings are there. Okay, we'll work our way uh, from the left side menu system uh, top down. This is the home page. Nothing really too exciting happening here. Profiles is where your aircraft get assigned to the various profiles. As you can see here, I have one uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the Kodiak, the 310. E320, uh, multi-complex, single complex, single non-complex, single non-complex, the SR22, so on and so forth. Scrolling down, uh, we have various uh, profiles here for X-Plane 11 as well. There's also online profiles, uh, which I've never really messed with, but it looks like there's a bunch of different profiles there for various gear to be pre-configured, ready to go. All right, over here we have our panels view. This is where the GoFlight P8 and T8 would get configured. Uh, if we take a look here, the first option I have here is, uh, this is actually for uh, what I call my cabin air. Uh, it basically runs a script uh, that interfaces and basically makes a Home Assistant API call to turn on and off a Wemo smart outlet, uh, which turns on and off a fan to give me uh, air circulation within the uh, home sim. On the T8 is the toggle panel. You can basically click all these uh, buttons. This is the virtualized version of what the panel looks like, and you could assign uh, all the functions accordingly. Uh, for instance, this switch is what I use for my uh, fuel pump switch, the AUX boost pump, uh, the Kodiak tank selectors, so on and so forth on this uh, profile. All right, next tab down on the left is the controls. Here we have the Cessna switch panel, the CLS uh, MK2 yoke, flaps, the rudder, the TQ6, and the VJoy virtual joystick. Uh, I don't use that. Um, but again, something like the TQ6, for instance, this is where you could sign the different axes. 
uh, to the various functions within the sim. Uh, the Cessna switch panel uh, shows up as a regular controller. Uh, it's non-graphical, uh, but basically as you move the different switches and buttons on the panel, uh, they light up to show you uh, what's what here. So as you click over, the ones highlighted are the positions that the switches currently are in. I believe this one on the end is actually the key, which is why it has the five positions for off, uh, and then left, right, mags, both, and then the starter position. The yoke I don't configure in SPAD as I use the Brunner software uh, exclusively for that as it has all the profiles and force settings and whatnot built right into that software, uh, including any of the buttons and, and things like that that you want to remap. Flap switch basically has two buttons. It has the up position and the down, and I just have the increment and decrement. Uh, the rudder I don't conf uh, configure in SPAD, and the only other thing I configure in SPAD under this tab is the Virtual Fly TQ6 throttle quadrant. Um, basically, depending on what I'm flying is, is what all these levers do. Uh, for instance, I actually use the uh, propeller controls, uh, which I believe are the ZX and Z, uh, the RX and Z axis here. Um, I use them in the Airfoil Labs 172 NG uh, to actually control the cabin air and cabin heat within the actual aircraft uh, because that actually simulates fogging of the windows in the appropriate conditions. Next page down is where all the Logitech flight instrument panels, or otherwise known as FIPS, get configured. Uh, and these are just my standby instruments. They're very straightforward. Uh, obviously, you, could, you can actually see the graphical image of what the panel looks like and what's loaded on it. You can click Add Gauge, and there's basically a bunch of various free and demo gauges and whatnot that you can choose to kind of basically configure these instruments however you'd like. So next tab down is the add-ons. This is where your data and event monitors are. Um, basically you can use the event monitor when the sim is loaded. You can click like, let's say for instance, the landing light switch within the virtual cockpit in the sim, uh, and that'll show you exactly what data rev or, or variable is being sent back and forth within the sim. And then you could use that to assign that to the particular physical switch you're trying to use. Uh, I don't have the sim loaded right now, so I can't really show you a demo of that. Uh, but if that's something you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments below and uh, we can probably make that happen. And the next tab down is just the settings page, which has my registration info and whatnot. Uh, and then the final tab is support, where you can actually uh, send and, and create tickets right through the software itself if you need uh, some support from the devs. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. That's about it for this video here. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification for future videos. Next Thursday is going to be the final video in the series where we cover the overall construction and my least favorite part, all the total costs involved. Be well and fly safe.